peace, peace. I feel like I snuck in, like these are some amazing people. Like, how did I get here? My name is Brandon B. Mike Odoms. I'm from the great city of New Orleans, the most amazing city, yeah. And amongst all the beauty, New Orleans is a place where blight is king, displacement is king. And I'm, I'm gonna talk to you briefly about the function of art, about what art can do. And I don't know the answer, but this project helped me understand the question a little more. There's a space not too far from where I grew up, not too far from where I currently live, that's been abandoned for eight years. 360-unit apartment complex. I was attracted to this space to start painting in. And the work I painted was about communicating to the people that lived there, that had to walk through that space every day, to kind of give them that sense of esteem and, and, and boost those images to help them realize that through struggle, there is a certain solution that creates beauty. And so within this space, I started to paint. The owners of this property ran into me one day. I was painting illegally. I had a conversation with them, challenged them, and said, okay, you're gonna demolish this. Let us clean it up and open to the public. They said, okay, you got one day. So I started to paint in this space with the intention of communicating, because artists are communicators, all of us communicate. So I called a bunch of friends, I said, look, we got this opportunity, let's go and work in this space. But there's a, a quote that I love so much that says, a condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. And so we started to research what happened in this space and how did it get there to the point where it was abandoned, to the point where the people there who used to live there were displaced. And from that narrative, we learned so much about what occurred. And we felt it would have been dishonest for us as artists to not reflect that in the work that we were doing. So all of us got together, created 15 days. We, op we started on the 1st of November. We opened our doors on the 15th of November to communicate a certain intention about this space, about what art can do. And in those 15 days, we transformed the space and we it began to invite our friends and say, yo, come through. We didn't know who would show up. We said one day of work. We all agreed that this was something we felt we had to do. Oh, thank you. So, so on that day we opened, Saturday only, as you see from the newspaper, Saturday only, we opened our doors and over 2,500 people came out. And we were kind of amazed. Well, not us, but the owners of the property, everybody involved. And they said, okay, you can go until we demolish the buildings. So former residents, people of all ages, families, they came out to experience this space and we stayed open for three months. Every weekend, and we would get thousands of people to come out. And people with tears in their eyes who used to live there. People who had all these vivid memories of what this space used to be. And then we noticed something. We said, okay, we opened on the weekends, but then on a the weekday, we had a demand for people trying to come in. We had all these photos that were sent to us of people trying to get access to the space, as you're about to see right here, this beautiful photo. And so we said, okay, let's open it up for school tours. So we invited schools to come through. We had over 3,000 schools, I'm sorry, 3,000 students come and experience the space. And they were able to see something that they knew so well, a space that they knew so well, but see it in a brand new way. And hear them learning the, the power of Fred Hampton and Asada Shakur, these were all painted on the wall. So they were learning narratives of individuals that they didn't even get a chance to learn in school. And we also challenged them to create in the space. We said, okay, now that you're here, you're gonna add to this space. You're gonna become one of the artists in the space. And so, they created this idea, so then when they came back the next week and they pointed it out like, look, this is my work, mom, this is my work. And this is one of the responses from one of the young people, one of the greatest experiences of my life. I'm accepting the challenge to enlighten all our people and alter society. Anybody wanna join me? This was a teenager. Because people asked him, well, what's the response? Like, you can't keep it here, why are you doing it? And we were like, this is what's gonna last forever, the impression on these youth. So we closed the doors on MLK Day, January 19th. We had one last day. Over 10,000 people came out. We, we wanted people to see the transforming power of art. And so I invited a bunch of friends of mine. I said, we gotta take this home in a big way. So I invited some artist friends of mine to let people see that this was more than just visual arts. This was music. This was a message about unity, about power, about what the responsibility of people can be. So I invited David Banner, Dead Prez, Erica Badu, they all came to help us close this in a beautiful way. There's a quote from Dr. King that says, almost always the creative dedicated minority has made the world a better place. 
And so what that means to me is no matter what you do, whether you got the power to flex your body, to flex your pen, to flex your mind, to flex your paintbrush, you have a responsibility with that. And that's what this project was about. We demonstrated that through all the artists, all the individuals that came together, we demonstrated that responsibility and what it looked like. And even though it was temporary, we felt that we did what we were supposed to do in that moment. I want to thank you all for this opportunity. Thank all the artists that came before me. Thank Amnesty International. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank y'all, thank y'all.